Yo! What's up everyone, Bytor here. I am thrilled to be back with this videos for you guys. As you may have been aware, we stopped uploading videos for the interview series. As a side note, while we have not been uploading videos, our Patreon page has been constantly updated at a regular cadence, and we are now at 70 posted real interview questions as of the recording of this video. We have gotten great feedback from you guys and also in our Patreon page. We realized how impactful these videos have been for you to help you prepare for interviews. In the time since we have started uploading until now, we have been approached by a few companies asking us to screen and or interview candidates for them. This was amazing. However, this put us in an interesting position where we asked ourselves the following questions. First. How can we show our clients that we are impartial given that we have a paid Patreon site? Second, how can we help you, our viewers, prepare without giving away material that we would otherwise use to screen candidates? And third, how can we keep helping you while also feeding top candidates to potential clients? We cannot claim to have perfect answers to these questions, but we have been actively working to address them. It seemed only appropriate that while we address these questions that we do not post new videos on our YouTube channel. Now, we do believe we have encountered a viable working model that can provide value to all involved. We will be disclosing our new approach in the coming months while we iron out some additional details. In the meantime, we have decided to keep uploading videos because of how beneficial it has been to our viewers. With that being said, one immediate change that you may notice in future videos is that we do not plan to give you all the answers during the videos anymore. Instead, we will show you the approach and take you 90% of the way there so you can finish the problem yourself and get the most value of it in terms of knowledge. All right. Let's take a look at a question that was submitted by one of our amazing patrons. In this particular example, you will either be shown the following circuit or will be asked to draw it. Then the interviewer will simply state, can you draw the voltage and current waveforms across the capacitor as well as the current through the transistor given the voltage waveform at the gate of the transistor? As it is tradition, we are going to give you about 10 seconds to pause the video and try to answer the question yourself. Man, it feels good to be back and being able to answer these kind of questions again. Let's dive in. Let's start by dividing the waveform into subregions. Let's call this region 1, 2, and 3. As you can already tell, it would be somewhat trivial to draw the waveform for region 1. If you do not see it immediately, don't sweat it. Take your time to digest it. If you are new to this channel and the Hardware Ninja philosophy, and you proceeded to draw the waveforms for the entire problem, or even sub-region 1, we can tell you already that you would be wrong, and you are forgiven for committing this mistake. If you are a seasoned ninja, you should already know what the first move here should be, right? Our philosophy is to always ask questions first. Dependent, dependent on your level of experience, interviewers will put you in very ambiguous situations and wait for you to seek help clarifying the problem. For example, would your answer look differently under these three conditions? One assuming an ideal device, second, assuming a real device, and third, assume everything is ideal except that the threshold voltage of the device is negative. There are many possible answers to this question depending on what the interviewer is after. We have many of this style of questions in our patron channel. Here, we challenge ninjas like yourself to push beyond the quote, quote, obvious answer and challenge yourself to think, is there something more to this problem? This mentality will always lead you to ask clarifying questions. Let's get back to the problem and assume that for now we ask the question, can I assume the device to be ideal? 
And the interviewer replies, no, let's assume some idealities and some non-idealities. Let's say the device has a threshold voltage of half VDD and an on resistance of R prime. Everything else you can assume to be ideal. Maybe now there is enough information to tackle the problem. Since we assume everything to be ideal except for the threshold voltage and the on resistance of the device, then we can probably ignore any leakage while the device is off. That means the voltage across the capacitor can be said to be VDD, assuming that the supply has been on for an infinite amount of time. We can also say that the current flowing into the capacitor is zero, since the capacitor is now fully charged. Otherwise, there would still be voltage developing across the capacitor, right? Finally, the current through the transistor is zero, since we assumed zero leakage. Now, let's take a look at what happens during the voltage step at the gate of the transistor. It is apparent that the voltage step is ideal from the way it has been drawn. So we can assume that the transistor is going to transition from its off state to its on state immediately. If we redraw the circuit, we will have the following. Now, let me cheat here for a second and get ahead of the problem. Let me ignore what happens during the transient event and instead focus on what would happen if the gate voltage was maintained for an infinite amount of time. We can quickly realize there is a resistor divider here that will set the voltage at the Vout node. That means the capacitor will have to discharge from its initial VDD voltage to a value of VDD times R plus R prime divided by R times R plus R prime. The discharge path is here. We can identify a capacitor discharging through some resistors. We have seen this type of problem many times. We know it will be an exponentially decaying function, right? So the voltage across the capacitor during the transient event will look like the following. Now let's get back to that transient event and let's try to draw it. The voltage across the capacitor during that transient event will look like the following. While the current coming out of the capacitor will be the following. We are on purpose here not annotating what the magnitude of these values are so you can work them out yourselves. Now, what is the time constant of this structure? Again, we will not write it here so you can work it out yourself. Now it would be a good time to tell the interviewer the following. Since we have no notion of how long the input voltage stays high, is it okay to assume it is many many times longer than the time constant of the circuit? Let's assume the interviewer agrees with us. So we finalize our drawing for the second part of the problem. Finally, what should the current through the transistor look like during this phase. We have the current that will be drawn from the power supply as well as the current that will be discharged from the capacitor. Once again, we will leave this as well as the rest of the problem for you ninjas to tackle on your own. If you need additional help to solve this problem or would like to check your answer with us, feel free to contact us through our Patreon channel. If you were able to nail the answers, let us know in the comments. But do not post the answers and ruin the fun for every other person watching here as well, as it'll ruin their experience and learning growth. That's all we've got for you today. Thank you so much again for your patience and for bearing with us while we go through this journey ourselves. We appreciate the support and we appreciate you. Cheers.